Hi guys, welcome back to my channel with Gnomes Live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to be making a tiny bed. In the last video, I was working on this vintage suitcase dollhouse, in which I said I was going to make this bed here, but I decided to make a twig bed first. I thought that might be a little bit more popular. Okay, so we're going to do the twig bed first. We're also going to do some bedding in this video. And I'm going to take you on a little rowboat ride. We're going to be gathering some sticks. So we need sticks, of course. We need some uh, white glue, something to cut your sticks with. And I also use a very thin gauge wire. And this is just to wrap the twigs together as the glue is drying. You can also use string. I just found the wire was super easy to use. And I'm also going to show you how to keep the fungus on the sticks. All right, so first we're going to go uh, gather up some sticks. You can get them from the woods, of course. Uh, my boyfriend and I went on a little rowboat ride, and then I fell in love with some sticks that I saw on the water. And as always, guys, the detailed timestamps are in the pinned comment below, where you'll also find links uh, to the other videos for the suitcase dollhouse. So as we were rowing around, we saw a log that had, or a tree that had fallen into the water, and there were some dead branches, and I love the color of them. So I had John break me off a few, and that's what we're going to make the bed with. And these had wonderful uh, fungus on them, fungus and different types of moss, and I want to keep that on there. So I'm going to try two different methods to try to keep these intact while we're building the bed. So let's take these home. We'll treat them with something to keep that fungus on there, and then we'll go ahead and we'll make a tiny bed. All right, I'm going to try the sealer first, but I'm going to pour it into a lid of this tin so I don't get pieces of the stick inside my can of sealer. So I just take a brush and just dab it in there and try to get it in underneath all the little pieces and stuff without knocking all the pieces off, of course. And then here's another one that I found as we were hiking, and I just love this one. So I'm going to try the spray glue with this one here. So let's take it outside. Now, I didn't measure the glue and water ratio. I just put enough water in there so I could get it to spray out, okay? So there's no measurements. Sorry, guys. So I got the ratio down to where I could actually spray it, and it did a good job here. I just did the one section. I didn't do the old man's beard up there, just this one half of the stick. And the white glue I was using with the water is just this Elmer's glue all. And uh, the sealer is this varathane, water-based varathane. So I only did the one test, and I did build the whole bed so I can give you uh, my results. I, I believe the stick here, the one done with the glue and the water, is a little bit more crispy. I, I don't like the feeling so much. And the very thing that I use on this here, on these sticks here, the fungus actually feels a little bit like leather. And it doesn't come off. Like, I, I'm not having any issues with it coming off. Like, there was a, a couple areas I had to put down with the glue again, but I think the very thing is my favorite. Out of, the, uh, out of the two choices. If I was to do it again, I would use the varathane. All right, with that out of the way, let's build a bed. All right, so when I started the bed, I had no idea the height of the footboard or the headboards that I wanted. So I just went with uh, a good height, what I thought would be a good height for the headboard, and I cut the footboards the same height. And then later on, I can decide if I wanna cut them down, which I do. So I got four pieces all the same height, so that is the headboard and the footboard. And when I cut them, they were all four inches high. And of course that is totally adjustable to what you wanna build, okay? So this is just what I ended up doing. Later on, I cut down the footboard pieces to about two and a half inches. And then I'm going to do this cross section for the footboard here. And I'm just testing it out to see how it looks. And I'm thinking that I want a little foot at the bottom. I'm gonna show you in a second. Add a little foot here. So I just angled out one little branch with my X-Acto knife like this, angled it out. So it would sit flush with that piece that's broken because that piece was already there. It was already broken that way. So I thought I'll just add a little piece here and I attach it with tacky glue. And tacky glue again is gonna be the best for this job because it grabs on so fast. You can use other glue of course, but you just have to, to leave it sit a little longer before you start playing around with it. So I had let it sit there for a few minutes to let that glue catch on. Then I had a couple of pieces uh, that looked like they were gonna come off, like the moss. So I just put some tacky glue in there as well, just to hold those pieces together. Okay, so back to the cross piece. I'm cutting little notches, and I'm gonna come back to how I'm cutting notches in a minute. But I'm just cutting little notches so that the, the sticks 
have something to sit inside of instead of just relying on glue. Okay, so I want them to sit inside of each other with the tacky glue, of course. So I'm just adding the one here. So I had to notch it out to fit on this stick here. So I'm wrapping the wire around just to hold this in. I've already added tacky glue, adding the wire to hold everything together while it dries. Okay, now I'm gonna add the other side. Now on this side, I'm actually going to end up cutting this foot off, this one that I'm pointing to. I ended up putting it in the wrong direction. I guess because I wasn't paying attention, I was filming. I actually wanted this stick to be facing the other way, like the foot to be facing inward. So later on I cut it off, but, but all the same process applies, right? You notch it out, add your tacky glue, wrap your wire around to hold everything in place. You wanna make sure everything is level and exactly where you want it sitting before you let it dry. All right, making the headboard now. I need to have this the same height as the footboard is of course and like I said those heights are adjustable to what you're looking for but mine is one inch from the floor to the top and that's the cross piece holding the two footboards together the foot sticks I guess I should call them and they're quite a bit longer right we cut them down later after everything is dry okay so that mark is one inch exactly from the floor I didn't plan that to be an inch that's just how it worked out and then my bed board that goes across sits on top of that cross piece and that raises the bed height up to about an inch and a quarter. So I just stood the footboard up and put it up against and put the headboard piece up against there and then just um, marked off where I needed to notch it out. So I got the one piece on. I'm just going to test it out here. Checking, double checking heights and all that's very important. Okay. Notch it out, tacky glue, wrap with wire. And I'm twisting the wire to pull it really tight and then I'm gonna cut off the excess wire. I've decided to leave the wire on. I was actually just using it to hold everything together, but then I decided why not just leave it there? I'm gonna be covering it up with moss later anyway. So I just tightened up the wire and then cut off the excess. All right, so now we're going to be doing the bed boards and the cross pieces. And my cross pieces are two and three quarters inches long. And again, those are adjustable to whatever size bed that you are making. So these are some cross pieces. I'm going to notch out each end because they're going to be sitting on the bed boards, the longer bed boards. So what I do first is just make an indent. And this is about a quarter inch up from the end of the stick. And that's about as wide as my bed boards are. Okay, so I just made an indent there and I'm just going to grab my cut free gloves and I highly suggest getting a pair of these guys if you're going to be doing some, you know, quite a bit of twig work and stuff because you have to kind of cut towards you. You don't want to do that with without your fingers protected. Okay, so from that notch on, I'm just uh, dragging my X-Acto blade down. Always work slowly. Never be in a rush either when you're working with an X-Acto knife. Okay, so I want to make another little indent here a little bit deeper. So doing the indent first before you start cutting anything is going to help your stick from splitting. It will also give you a guide on where uh, or how deep you want to go. Okay, you don't want to go too deep, of course, because it could just crack your stick. So work slowly, get that indent in there, and then you can just cut away the parts that you want to cut away, and it's so much easier that way. And I use an emery board to sand off the ends if I need to. And of course, on the other end, you just want to work directly across. And same thing, indent and then start cutting away what you want to cut away. And those cross pieces are going to be sitting on these bed boards. And these bed boards are four and a half inches long. And I've notched the ends. So they're going to sit on the footboard and the headboard. Those notches are going to be glued down. And then the top half of the stick, uh, the part that the bed slats are going to be glued down on top of, I need to flatten that out doesn't have to be perfect, of course, but you just want a surface that the bed slats can be glued onto. And now I'm ready to attach my, my boards to the headboard and the footboard, but you want to have something that the headboard can lean up against. So a brick or a big book, even a wall would work. You just want that bed to be level as those two pieces are drying. And then make sure that there's full contact with that glue and the headboard and footboard. So I'm going to put something heavy on there. 
And I forgot to film it, but I did stop to remove that little foot that was sticking out right here because it was on the wrong side, remember? So I took that off. Also took off the excess that was sticking out here and on this side. And that was just a matter of using my shears and cutting those pieces off. Okay, so now they're dry. I'm going to be adding my cross pieces. And here's a piece. I thought this was great. It has a little extra branch coming down. So I notched the ends and I uh, leveled out what I needed to level out with my X-Acto blade. And this will go right in the center. And then I have another little stick that has an extra little piece, like a branch sticking out there. I'm going to use that as well. I'm going to add tacky glue to that and then I'm going to use it right at the footboard there. So it's going to add extra strength. Just that little piece is going to add extra strength. And that's what you want to do as you're building yours. You just want to give that bed extra strength where you can and whenever you can. So I am going to add an extra piece right at the cross pieces that go across. I'm putting a piece right on top of those on the footboard and the headboard. So this is the footboard. So right on top. So yeah, I ran a bead of tacky glue right across the whole thing and popping in so you can see a better view. So it's sitting right on top of the footboard cross piece. Okay, so that extra piece right on top and on top of the headboard as well. And that way I can put glue in the corners and that just adds a lot more strength to the bed frame itself. All right, so back to the footboard. Here is a piece that's, it's got a bend in it and I thought this was perfect because I can glue part way up the footboard and that kind of grabs onto that stick as well. So it's gonna add strength that it's also adding a little bit of whimsy to the footboard. Okay, so now my glue is not totally cured yet, but I can still, I can play around with it a little bit. So I'm just going to cut my footboards down. You can see I just cut that one down. And that turned out to be two and a half inches. So I'm going to do this side. Now this bed is actually pretty strong on its own, but I do feel some weak areas. So I'm going to address those. The cross section here with that extra branch in the middle, that worked out really well. It, it helped with the stability. I'm going to add a piece at the very top, so I've notched the one end. I want it to fit perfectly. So I'm just going to mark off the other side, exactly where I want that notch to begin and end. So there I go, I have to notch in between those marks there. And I've notched them out, now I'll just attach them with uh, tacky glue. And I let that sit until the glue had grabbed on. Now I'm going to address a little bit of the weaker areas. So anywhere there's holes in where I've attached the wood together, anywhere there's space, I'm going to fill it up with uh, the shavings off of the sticks. So fill it up with tacky glue and then take those shavings and then just shove it into those open spaces. So anywhere you've notched out the, the wood to fit on top of each other and you can see a space, fill it up with tacky glue and these shavings. And I do this in all the corners as well. And this adds so much strength to your piece. And you can also use the fungus or moss and just break that down as well. So both, you know, shavings of the sticks, moss or fungus will do the same thing. You just want to have full contact with that glue in the, in the shavings or the moss into that space. I'm going to add another piece right here underneath everything. This is my diagonal piece and you really do want to have a diagonal piece going somewhere in your in your bed. Uh, when you have two bed boards going uh, vertical, right, you want to have the horizontal ones of course, but if you don't put one of them diagonal, your bed will have the tendency to kind of have that wobble, <laughs> like a walk if you know what I mean. So you have to have something diagonally holding things together. Okay, so this one, I you can see that I shaved the top of it, so it's flat. It's going to hold underneath the bed. You will not be able to see it from the side of the bed. Okay, so it's going to be tucked away, but it's going to be one of my structural strength pieces. Okay, so now that's dry, I'm going to be adding my filler pieces. These ones are not that important. I'm just adding them in to fill the space. So now my bed is nice and strong, but these are just my filler pieces. So I've leveled out what I need to level out and I'm just going to fill in the spaces. This is a short one and I'm just going to, I had to cut it in a diagonal way so it'll butt up against that one branch there and still get across. So yeah, you, you want to do all the structural pieces first, make sure everything's nice and strong and then you can add in your filler pieces. And you can see there's glue in the center there too that's also touching my diagonal piece. So everything here is going to be so strong. And I didn't do the headboard until I had the bedding made, so I knew exactly where the pillow was going to sit and everything. So you might want to do the same thing. Anyway, I just did a simple cross piece uh, for the headboard and then just built off of that. 
And no worries, I haven't jumped ahead uh, with the bedding. We're going to be doing that in the next clip. All right, so let's throw this around a little bit. I just want to show you how strong it is. I'm not worried about anything breaking. Even the fungus is stuck on there firmly. I don't have to worry about anything with this bed. And that's, you know, using tacky glue, allowing drying time, and adding those structural strength pieces. So there's no wobble at all. Uh, the headboard, of course, because it's taller than the rest of it, just like a regular headboard would do, it has a little bit of a wobble near the top, but that is completely normal. And you could add a cross piece from the headboard to the um, sideboards like this if that was a problem for you, if you were worried about yours wobbling there, and then the bedding would hide that. And I did end up removing this wire and one other wire completely. Uh, this one was loose because remember I, I chopped off part of its leg so it had a little bit less to hang on to. And the wires that were showing, uh, I just added tacky glue in the wood shavings or the fungus. Uh, that works really well and you can't even tell. It just looks like part of it. And at the beginning of the video you saw me putting sealer on the sticks and now the fungus that I covered with the sealer actually come off in big strips using my X-Acto blade and I was able to use it where I needed it on the bed. So I just attached it with tacky glue. So now I'm starting to think about the bedding and the mattress and I'm going to do these first before I do the headboard because I want to know how high I need to put the center piece of the headboard. So I have a handkerchief and a napkin. I think these are going to be perfect but I find them a little bit too white so I'm going to go dip them in a very light tea and this is just your regular English breakfast tea and hot water. I'm just going to dunk that a few times. And then I let it sit for about a minute. Uh, of course, if you want it darker, then you leave it sit longer. I'm going to put my uh, handkerchief right in there. Give that a dunk a couple of times. Get it completely saturated with the tea. Wring it out and let it dry. So again, the white was nice, but the uh, dipping it in the tea just kind of tones it down and just gives it some age. And that's what I was looking for. So you can make that as dark or as light as you'd like to make it. So I cut the pieces, I'm just giving you the measurements here, because I'm not, um, I don't have any real skill in sewing, <laughs> so I just kind of wing my way along and just eye everything up. So I cut two rectangle pieces, and I'm going to sew them along three sides. All right, I've sewn around three sides, and now the fourth side I'm going to sew as well, but I need to leave a little bit of a gap, because we have to turn this right side. I used a pencil and drew a straight line, so I know where to put my needle because I'm just going to actually weave my needle in and out here all the way to the end of that line and this is how I did the three sides as well so just weave in and out and then pull that and there we've sewn across and don't cut the thread we need to leave the thread there I'm going to cut all the corners so you cut all four corners on an angle without cutting through the thread of course leaving the thread there and now we're going to turn it right side and of course you could use whatever you have on hand to stuff your mattress I'm going to use this moss that I've had for over a year so there's no bugs in it or anything like that I'm going to chop it down get it a little easier to put inside my mattress separating the hard bits from the softer and I'm just thinking about those old hay stuffed mattresses <laughs> And yeah, I thought about this moss. Anyway, I got all the hard bits out of there. And to get it in, I was having a little bit of struggle there. So I'm just making a cone out of cardstock. Gonna cut the bottom. And then I'll use this to get the moss in there. And it worked great. So I'll just fill up the cone. And then I'll use a pencil or a stick and then shove that into the mattress. And this made my job go a lot faster. All right, so I got it all stuffed up. And now I just have to close up the one corner. So I'm just going to run a stitch right across there, a couple of stitches, and close that up. And then next we're going to make the pillow. Again, I'm going to give you the measurements here, and I don't know if that's going to do anything for you guys. It's just you have to leave a little bit of space for sewing, right, and um, for making the edges. So two rectangular pieces, and I'm going to sew around just like I did the mattress. And then once I get around, turn it right side, leaving a little bit of gap for that moss. And I was so happy to have the funnel here because this is pretty tiny. And the funnel worked great to get the moss in there. And I close it up the same way I did the mattress. And I put a stitch right in the middle to keep it from being too puffy. And now for the pillowcase, um, I chose part of the handkerchief where it was already sewn across at the top, so I didn't have to do that. So all I have to do is sew three sides and then I'll have a pillowcase. 
and this one is about two inches wide and two and a half inches long. Now for the bedspread, um, I wasn't really thinking this one through. I ended up sewing all four sides. So I had to iron all four sides and then sew along that iron seam. And what I ended up doing in the end was just sewing a plain piece of handkerchief to the napkin. Now it would have went a lot faster had I sewed these together like I did the mattress. Um, you know, sew them inside out and then flip them right side. But oh well, it worked out in the end. Um, I ended up sewing these two pieces together. And I'll give you the measurements, the final measurements of the bedspread. Five and a quarter by four inches. So the only thing left to do now is just make our bed. So we'll put the mattress on there. And I did make a little sheet, tuck that under. <laughs> just like making a real bed. Bedspread, don't forget to fluff up the tiny pillow. All right, my friends, that would bring us to the end of this one. If you make yourself a twig bed by watching this video, I want to see it. <laughs> Please tag me on Instagram. I'll put the link in the pinned comment below. Also in the pinned comment below, you'll find the link to the full rowboat video on my Instagram. So if you're interested in seeing that, see those links. And in the next video, we'll be making the sewing card bed, like I said. And yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So until then, we'll see you in the next one.